You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. This is Rio of Madison Rising, and you're listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. It's time now for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. Now, here's Grouchy. Really? What are you, a mile away with the glass? Come on, pull it up here. Much better. Much better. We tell you what. After a couple of years of doing this, you'd think Seymour would have it down pat by now, but we're going to have to work on that over the holidays. Good evening, everybody. Glad to be back with you. <clears throat> I am uh, without my drink tonight, so bear with me. Uh, ran out of tea, so it's brewing right now. Um, before we get rolling tonight, lay out a little programming reminder for you. Coming up following me tonight will be Jesse's POV. And then, Rick, did I see right? Are we replaying uh, Stafford voice, or are we doing something else in that time slot now? What's the deal? Uh, as far as I know, I think it might be a drop, but I haven't checked yet. I know he's uh, taking till I believe, after January 1st off because he's got some other stuff going on. So are we doing a replay on that tonight, or is there something filling that slot? That's kind of the plan as a replay, sir. Okay, replay it is of the Stafford voice. And then... You get the man, the myth, the legend, Rowdy Rick with America off the rails, capping off your night. So anyway, stay tuned. Get your knowledge on. It's the best place to be anyway. Wednesday TV. Well, <laughs> come on, let's face it. TV in general just sucks. So <laughs> stay here and stay tuned. Now, before we get rolling, uh, couple of things you might want to need to know about. Uh, let's see what else is happening in the world today. We got California wild, wildfires still churning. Uh, folks, some of this stuff looks spooky out there. And I know a couple of people that are out that way. And uh, they're a little freaked out by it. Uh, especially, especially my newcomer boy out there who moved out there from the East Coast. He's not used to all this crazy California stuff. So, uh, hey, yo. Hang tight, Jay. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, we got, uh, <clears throat> we're going to address this a little later on, but uh, Trump recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and talking about moving our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Uh, like I said, we'll talk about, about that in a little bit. Um you know, what else is going on in the world? Uh, Russia banned from the Winter Olympic Games. Uh, now they're saying they may send their athletes to compete under a neutral flag. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Uh, I mean, obviously they wouldn't, quote unquote, represent Russia, but wouldn't everybody know they were the Russian athletes? And the whole point is that they not be there. So, you know, who knows? Uh, we got some GOP lawmakers uh, that are that are sounding a note of discord on the tax overhaul plan. Um, you know, we're not going to we're not going to dig into a whole lot of that tonight. I'm going to wait till I can get some more details on it. Um, nation's homeless population increased this year for the first time since 2010, the government says. Uh, but in most places outside of the West Coast, a decline continues. So this is mostly a West Coast phenomena thing. Interesting how they're supposed to be uh, such uh, 
wealthy states that take good care of their people and, and always say that the conservatives are the ones that force them out. Um, I know for a fact that California has a supermajority of liberal legislation, so there are no conservative laws that are forcing people out. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we got a mayoral race in Atlanta that is uh, allegedly too close to call. Less than 1% of the vote separates the two candidates. Uh, Norwood vowing to request a recount. Uh, Bottoms declaring herself the winner. So we'll see what happens there. I, I, you know, I don't really see this being overturned. Bottoms will be the new mayor. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> We have uh, uh, France's biggest rock star passed away, uh, Johnny Halliday. Uh, that's H A L L Y D A Y. Uh, he fashioned his glitzy stage aura um, basically as a combination of Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Buddy Holly. Uh, he is now deceased at the age of 74. So anyway, that's other things going on that you might want to know about. Um, maybe not. It's okay either way. Um, so we're going to roll into the heart of the program here. And we're going to kick off tonight talking about refugees. Not like what you think, though. So since... Oh, well, in the first two months of fiscal year 2018, so we're just talking two months, October and November, uh, compared to the first two months of 2017 fiscal year. Uh, so the first, you know, Obama versus Trump, uh, refugee admissions to the United States are down 83%. 83%. Now, that's a huge number, okay, as a percentage goes, but, you know, let's take a look here. Um, October, November of this year, 3,108 refugees were admitted into the United States. And that still sounds like a big number. That's, that's you know, better than 1,500 per month. Um, but compared to the October, November of last year when Obama was in office, uh, we're talking about 18,300 refugees for the same time period. So an 83% decrease, um, this is a good start. This is a good start. Uh, look, displaced refugees are much better housed, accommodated, taken care of, However you want to deem it, it's much better to care for these people in theater closest to their home country. That's where they're going to find the customs that they're used to, the foods that they're used to. You know, bringing them here is not necessarily a favor to them, and it's certainly not a favor to us. So anyway, uh, meanwhile, 14 months after the Obama administration backed a push at the UN for global responsibility sharing for refugees and migrants, the Trump administration has officially pulled out of this initiative. Uh, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said it's simply not compatible with United States sovereignty. I like that. Sovereignty. It means something People should look it up. So the weak yet announcement comes amid a sharp drop in you know, the number of refugees, obviously. Uh, the most striking change between the refugee admissions in the two initial two-month periods between this fiscal year and last uh, were the size of the contingents from Syria, Somalia, and Iraq. So uh, October, November 2016, 2,259 Syrians, yeah, 2,259 Syrians, 97.6% Muslim, 1.7% Christian. 
2,463 Somalis at 99.9% Muslim and 2,262 Iraqis uh, with 75% Muslim, 17.3% Christian, and 7.4% Yazidi all resettled into the United States. Now, by comparison to this year's numbers for the same two-month period, uh, 33 Syrians, uh, 22 of which were Muslim and 11 were Christian, 126 Somalis, with 100% of them being Muslim, and 76 Iraqis, with 84% being Muslim, 10% Christian, and 4% Yazidi. So, um, you know, there's that's a big breakdown. That's a big breakdown. And it's important. You know, we talk about people, uh, we talked about Obama for years and the way that he seemed to intentionally neglect Christian refugees from these countries. These people were being outed from their houses, uh, burned out literally at some places, um, and, and fleeing for their lives and couldn't get into the United States. Yet people that just left because the area was war-torn, but they support the extremist Muslim views were climbing into the United States in droves. It's ridiculous. So anyway, um, <clears throat> among the 3,108 refugees admitted since fiscal year 2018 began, the five largest contingents are from Bhutan, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burma, Ukraine and Eritrea. And the religious breakdowns of these 3,108 refugees were 59.6% Christian, 15.4% Muslim, 9.6% Buddhist, 7.6% Hindu, 4.7% Kirat, and 0.9% Jewish. So huge contrast, um, it is what it is. Uh, it, it's a different direction for the United States, and frankly, it's one I like a whole lot better, uh, especially as it relates to, as Nikki Haley put it, our sovereignty. So anyway, uh, you know, these figures reflect clearly the differences in the uh, administration's approach on refugees between current and past. Uh, the last full fiscal year of the Obama administration saw 85,000 refugees admitted. And President Trump has proposed a refugee admission ceiling of 45,000 for fiscal year 18 and that would be the lowest ceiling set by an administration since the Refugee Act was passed in 1980. I like it. There, look, there's no law that says we have to admit people into our country. When they come here, they should be able to contribute instantly. They should be grateful to be here. And they shouldn't be a sponge on our economy. And uh, if you don't know what I mean by that, I suggest you get your tail over to my friend Misfit Politics and, and take a look at their page. Uh, there was a piece I, I wrote for them some time back about how uh, my grandparents, when they immigrated to the country, uh, my great grandmother told my grandmother, uh, this is it. We're in America now. No more Spanish. You speak English and English alone. Boom. It was, that's how it was. They wanted so bad to fit in that they tried so hard. And that's how it should be for everybody. These people that come here, 
and slide across the border and then just have their hand out? Uh uh. No. We need to start cutting these hands off, financially speaking. So, anyway, uh, in a statement Sunday, uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the U.S. would continue to engage at the U.N., but in this case, it simply cannot in good faith support a process that could undermine the sovereign right of the United States to enforce our immigration laws and secure our borders. Thank you. For the man that's rumored to be on his way out. We shall see. Anyway, uh, so the United States supports international cooperation on migration issues, but is the primary responsibility of sovereign states to help ensure that migration is safe, orderly, and legal. Now, here's yeah, here this is what gets me about this. Okay. So you have a president in you know, he's acting on the constitutional authority that he is granted again, in the Constitution, because it's constitutional authority, on immigration. And we have these states suing him over this. They're suing him. Why? Because they they want more refugees? No, they don't want more refugees. They were there were st some of the states that are suing Trump over this or, or the Trump administration over this or the White House or whoever there is they're suing are the same states that were complaining to the Obama administration that they were getting too many and they, they needed to slow down because they couldn't accommodate it all so much so fast. But then when Trump slows it down, boom, lawsuit. That tells you right there, folks, that it's partisan politics. It doesn't have anything to do with the policies because he actually did what they wanted him to do. He slowed it down. So anyway, we got that going for us. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, immigration, it's down. Well, refugee immigration is down. Um, we're going to look deeper after the first of the year at some first quarter hit numbers, and we're going to see what's going on with immigration across the board. So be ready for that sometime, uh, probably mid to late January. We'll get it put together as soon as I can get the numbers. Anyway, moving on. Monday, the Supreme Court basically handed a victory to President Trump by allowing his latest travel ban targeting people from six Muslim-majority countries to go into full effect as the legal challenges continue in lower courts. The nine-member court, with two liberal justices dissenting, granted his administration's request to lift two injunction in, injunctions imposed by lower courts that had partially blocked the ban, which is the third version of a contentious policy that Trump first sought to implement a week after taking office in January. The high court's action means that the ban will now go fully into effect for people from Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen seeking to enter the United States. Uh, President Trump has said the travel ban is needed to protect the United States from terrorism by Islamic militants. Now, <clears throat> if this makes it harder for a terrorist to get into our country, I'm all for it. Do I think it's going to stop terrorism from getting into our country from these countries? No, not fully. I don't think anything can stop it fully. Um, I, you know, I, I just think it's a start. That's all. Uh, Jeff Sessions, Attorney General, called the Supreme Court's action a substantial victory for the safety and security of the American people. Uh, Sessions said the Trump administration was heartened that a clear majority of the justices allowed the president's lawful proclamation protecting our country's national security to go into full effect. The ban was challenged in separate lawsuits by the state of Hawaii and the American Civil Liberties Union, 
Uh, both sets of challengers said the latest ban, like the earlier ones, discriminates against Muslims in violation of the United States Constitution and is not permissible under immigration laws. Um, yeah, no. Sorry. That is not factually correct. Uh, Trump had promised as a candidate to impose a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Last week, he shared on Twitter anti-Muslim videos posted by a far-right British party leader. So what? So it, it's not necessarily anti-Muslim. It's anti-radicalized Muslim videos. You know, and nobody wants to draw that differentiation. Nobody wants to, to, to cut the line. Trump himself has even said that not all Muslims are bad people. So these people screaming that he's being prejudiced against Muslims, blow it out your tails. Uh, you know, of course, the ACLU says it's unfortunate that the full ban can move forward now. Uh, but this order does not address the merits of their claims, and they continue to stand for freedom, equality, and for those who are unfairly being separated from their loved ones. Hey, you know, their loved ones can always go to them. They don't have to come here. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you know, it is what it is. So the ban is in effect now. It, uh, it covers people from North Korea and certain government officials from Venezuela. Hey, come on. It's not just Muslim countries. So the Supreme Court said the ban will remain in effect regardless of what the appeals court rule, uh, at least until the justices ultimately decide whether to take up the issue on the merits, which they are highly likely to do, the court's order said the appeals court should decide the case with appropriate dispatch, which is basically their way of chastising these lower courts saying, follow the damn law. Uh, the quote from uh, Hawaii Attorney General Douglas Chin was, we agree a speedy resolution is needed for the sake of our universities, our businesses, and most of all, for people marginalized by this unlawful order. Uh, Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor said they would have denied the administration's request. So, you know, look, you had Ginsburg and Sotomayor dissent on this, uh, uh, on this decision. That means Kagan is even on board, knowing, recognizing, that this is lawful. Not that she likes it, but she recognizes that it's lawful and stood up and did the right thing. There might be hope for the SCOTUS after all. Now, Rick, um, I know we didn't talk much before getting on the air about uh, the plan, but we're going to bump through the, the very bottom of the hour like we did last week, if that's okay with you. So I'm just going to keep rolling here. Cool by me. Cool by you. Okay. And uh, our guests should be uh, calling in during the break uh, between 35 and 40 after. Okay, cool. So, and, and that is on the conference line that you told me to use. Uh, I didn't know you were still planning on using that because you only had one guest. But, yeah, I can get it set up. Get it set up. <laughs> Rick's the man. He... Man, I'm going to tell you what, I couldn't do this without him. He saved my bacon more than, more than 100 times on the air. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, he is the man. God bless him. He takes so much abuse. <laughs> so anyway, the San Francisco-based uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, yeah, the, the same Ninth Circuit that goes against Trump no matter what, uh, we'll hear arguments on the merits of Hawaii's challenge on Wednesday in Seattle. That'd be today. Um, the Fourth U.S. Circuit of Appeals, uh, let's see, we'll hear arguments on the merits of the case spearheaded by the ACLU in Richmond on Friday. So we've got the Fourth and the Ninth taking it up at the same time, basically, just a couple days apart. Uh, Trump issued his first travel ban targeting several Muslim-majority countries back in January. 
then issued a revised one in March after the first was blocked by federal courts. And why is, oh, that's why, uh, excuse me. My phone was buzzing because it's dying. So anyway, um, the Trump administration said the president put the latest restrictions in place after a worldwide review of ability of each country in the world to issue reliable passports and share data on individuals with the United States. The administration argues that a president has broad authority to decide who can come into the United States, but detractors say the uh, expanded ban violates a law forbidding the government from discriminating based on nationality when issuing immigrant visas. I got news for you folks. The Constitution says that the president has the sole authority to stop any and all immigration for any and all reasons into the United States. You're going to lose your argument. All right. So now uh, let's deal with some ugly stuff going on. Ugly stuff. In the period of May 17th of this year through September 30th of this year, there has been this little thing going on called the special counsel. You know, Robert Mueller looking into the quote unquote Russian collusion uh, uh, from the election. Uh, but as this thing drags on now for, you know, well, since May 17th, um, through the end of September, the special counsel's office has spent a total of $3.21 million on its investigation into Russian interference in the U.S. election and, quote unquote, related matters. So Mueller was appointed a special counsel by Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, uh, who is now also uh, in jeopardy of being under investigation and, and possibly even removed from office. Who knows? Um, $3.21 million in taxpayer money. Now, that breaks down to $1.7 million in personnel compensation and benefits, 223500 in travel and transportation of people on this team, $156 in, quote unquote, transportation of things. I'd like to see that broken down a little bit, but I mean, 156 bucks, who cares, right? in the big picture, $362,500 in rent, communications and utilities, $157,000 in contractual services such as IT and transcript services, $26,442 in supplies and materials, and nearly three quarters of a million dollars in acquisition of equipment. That's really like broken down a little more detailed. So anyway, Rosenstein appointed Mueller to investigate any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Trump, as well as any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation, blah, 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 blah. The big story here, folks, is that, you know, we know they got Flynn. Flynn's going to plead guilty to one count of lying to the FBI. Uh, they say he's cooperating fully with the investigation. Yada, 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 yada. How many millions more are we going to spend on this investigation that, you know, you can't even get reliable information about anymore. I, it was leaked that Mueller was getting Deutsche Bank uh, records that were 20 years old on Trump. That would have nothing to do with this. I mean, really. And then it was it came out that, you know, maybe he didn't get that. No, he didn't. You know, White House says, no, he didn't do that. But. Well, you know, 
You just don't know. You know, you can't trust the media they, because they're so worried about getting a damn one-tenth share more than somebody else mm. that they're willing to flush their credibility down the toilet to get it. It's sickening. It really is. So anyway, as, as this special investigation tarries on and, and, and drags and mopes and whatever, our taxpayer dollars being wasted, absolutely wasted. All right. So anyway, um, we're, we're just about to that point where we've got to take the break here. Uh, Rick, go ahead and queue up a nice long break, and hopefully our guest uh, will be on the line before that is over with. Uh, stay tuned, folks. It's about to get fun here. You and me, ain't that America? Something to see, baby, ain't that America? Home on the free, Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
$100,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Oh, but ain't that America? You and me. Ain't that America? Something to see, baby. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have our guest on the line. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome Tiffany to the program. Thank you for joining us, Tiffany. Rick, cue her intro music, please. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was... Uh, I was dancing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's your song, right? I mean... Yeah. That's great. Okay, so we're we're doing this segment called Holiday Traditions. Uh, I, I think you've already had a little inside information as to what goes on here, so... Um, yes. We're just going to turn it over to you, Tiffany, and tell us uh, about your holiday tradition, because that's what this is all about. Um. Okay, so... When I moved back to my hometown with my husband, um, our first Christmas here, we were uh, at the mall shopping, and they have a they put up a tree every year in the mall with, um, they call them angels, and they are kids in our local foster system who um, they just want sponsors for Christmas presents for them. Sorry. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> So um, we, every year, grab an angel off the tree and get presents for them. And it's been fun um, the last couple of years. So we have a six-year-old, three-year-old, and one-year-old. And the last couple of years, we let our six-year-old pick who who the foster kid is. And she usually picks someone around her age and a girl, and then she can help shop for her. So um, we're going to probably be doing that this weekend. And it's always just a nice, nice um, way for us to explain to our kids, especially the oldest, about um, how lucky they are to have a roof over their head and get presents on Christmas morning and kind of just explain, you know, the different circumstances that everyone grow up in. So. Well, that's fantastic. I like it. I like it a lot. Um Thanks. <laughs> it's uh it, it is traditional and uh and there's nothing nothing better than being able to take just a, a a simple tradition like that and use it to teach your kids you know not just what christmas is about but life in general yeah and the first you know of obviously the first few years um they don't understand it. And I don't, you know, I don't know how much the six year old really understands, but it's nice to be able to um, see them kind of grasp the comment or the, the issue a little bit more as they get older. And um, especially with the six year old, we were watching um, like one of those really depressing Sarah McLaughlin um, <clears throat> ASPCA commercials came on. Oh one day, my God, yes. And she was watching it and she was like, Oh, Mom, look at those dogs. And I'm going, no, isn't that sad? Does it make you sad? And she goes, no, not really. <laughs> not so, really? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah. Maybe she needs a little extra lesson in compassion here. So <laughs> so the, 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 the puppies in the in the freezing cold in the cages, that, that doesn't really tug at her yeah, heart? Yeah, they do huh? nothing for her. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, I, I have to ask, okay? Do, yeah. do you have pets at home? We do. We have a dog, and <laughs> the two little ones and the dog are best friends. 
oldest and him have a love hate relationship. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, th- there was no. there was some some nippage there. I guess. Uh, yeah. The the dog maybe took a nip at a hand or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, she just he she doesn't give him attention. So he like follows her around specifically wanting attention. <laughs> oh. She's like, he won't leave me alone. So. Yeah. He just wants loving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's, this is, I love it. It's been such a long time since I had such a little one. So, uh, yeah, I, I forget it's what it's like sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, it's but really I forget fun. too. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you it's probably good that we block day. out some of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine's 28 now. So, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the six-year-old was just crying because we're out of blueberry waffles. So that's what life is like these hey, days. That, hey, you know, that's a staple food. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a, it's a pretty legitimate reason to cry. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, I didn't get to see uh, your question on, you had, you had asked me a question on Twitter before you came on the air. And the answer to your question, if you remember what it was, is yes. Yes. Uh, I don't uh, okay. stifle free That's... speech. I only stifle stupid speech. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any specific cuss words I want to throw out there, just in case they slip, because they I, tend I, to. I got you. No, we are, we are <laughs> safe. We are we are a we are a freedom of speech kind of place. So yeah, good. We are good that way. Um, <laughs> All right. I can I can tell your uh, your threat to come on with the liquid courage is just a threat. So I you know. I was I was ready for it, but I can tell that you're not doing it. So thank you. <laughs> I well, no, I had a couple. I had a I had just enough time to get a couple of shots of Tito's in before before I called it. Oh, look at you! <laughs> Otherwise, I may not have called. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, there's nothing to be scared of. This is just like having a conversation, and uh, yeah. you know, like you know, it, it, it's just good. You know, we got people listening, and that's. That's all they're doing. I'm not going to let them call in and bother you. Uh, <laughs> you're just having a conversation. That's all there is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, you, 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 do you guys uh, now? This is the tree you talk about. They they do call that the angel tree. Is that the is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering if it was Sorry. the same popular, uh, you know, because they're they're nationwide, so everybody. Yeah. Everybody sees the angel trees and, and it's a man, it, it is such a great cause. And you know, what's heartbreaking is, is when I see angels still on the tree that aren't getting anything. Yeah. That's, what's really hard. And I it's, always wonder what they do for those kids. I don't know. I've never followed up to ask, but, and I, I wish, either, but I, know, I wish we could pick more than one kid. Maybe someday we can, but um, well, for yeah. now we just pick our one and we spoil them as much as possible. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's such a good thing. Um, I, I love that whole program. Uh, it, it really, it sums up more than just Christmas though, because there are so many people that are in need that we don't even know about. Yeah. And the, yes, the, I agree. The, Sorry. Isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, they just follow me. I'm going from room to room. I'm trying to avoid them, and they just follow me. <laughs> no, it's good. It's it's all good. We're having fun. We can laugh at it, and uh, and, yeah. and it's helping us here. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it gives a different perspective because this is a it's a kind of live show that I've never done before. I can honestly say that. Yeah. So, uh, and, and there's With nothing wrong screaming with that. in the background. Hey, keep me on my toes. I'm good that way. Uh, yeah. we, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we just, uh, we just know that there's so many people out there that are, that are in need and nobody can do everything. And that's why it's right. incumbent on everybody to try to do something. Right. And I, I love how you use it. I love how you use it to, to teach to the kids and, and, you know, again, as they get older, they'll understand more and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they'll, they'll understand why it's important to, to share 
when you have so much, you, you may not even think you have much, but when you right. start drawing the comparison lines, you know, the older we get, the easier it is to see how much we, we really are blessed with and, and what we can pass on to somebody else. Yeah, I agree. It's a great tradition and I love it. And <laughs> Thank I, you. you. <laughs> I, I absolutely hate that your buddy could not be here with us tonight. Um, I know, poor baby. Uh, poor baby, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bella was supposed to be with us, but uh, but little baby got pneumonia. And we Yay. understand that there are much more important things than and having this kind of fun. So, yeah. Bella, if you're out there, prayers to you and little miss. Uh, want everything. Yes, definitely. Fine. And... Uh, you know, we've got, uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have, we have another show to do in this series before it's over with. Um, it's going to be on the 20th. So, you know, if you, if you would like to, um, send me an update on what you do with your angel tree, uh, just because I, I know that, uh, it's it's hard enough to get people on the air this time of year. I won't ask you to call back in on the 20th if you don't want to. But if you wanted to deliver the update yourself, that's fine. If you want to send it, I'd be happy to read it to everybody to let them know what your update is and let yeah. them know how your tradition has been carried out. Um, on the 20th, and, I, and I'm, I hate that I don't get to do a show next week, but I have to do an office Christmas party thing. Of course, they settle on my show night yeah. to do that, but... Those are the worst. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Inconsiderate SOBs, I'm telling you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but anyway, uh, on the 20th, I'm going to have Aggie on the show. Oh, how fun. Yes, and she has a couple of super fun things that her family does that... I bet. She is one a kick. Is, oh, she is. She is. And one of them is just going to blow everybody away. Um, oh, because, man. yeah, I'm not even going to spoil it. I'm, I'm not stealing her thunder. I'm just going to say it's great and you should tune in and listen. <laughs> I will. I'm going to be taking notes. <laughs> uh, uh, you might need to because the one sounds pretty complicated, too. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's one of the – it's what what would we call what would i call this rick uh kind of like an avalanche tradition and and i'm going to leave that right there as a teaser for aggie oh, an avalanche tradition and hmm. uh that's going to crescendo greatly um ah let's see what else what else uh tiffany uh, at, at work do you guys do anything there um i i mean i, we I don't do. want I don't we, want to give away your profession have, location or anything, but I mean, I know. Yeah, what no. Um, we had our little, like, I work in a small office. There's like um, four of us in my office. There's like, I think, 10 total in the department. So we had a small <laughs> Christmas party on Friday, but um, we couldn't find a sitter. So I had to stay sober and drive home, which was like really lame. Yeah. <laughs> And then Saturday we have, I work in a hospital, we have our big um, Christmas party on Saturday, which I've never gone to before, but my coworkers guilted me into it. <clears throat> they think I'm going to dance, which is not going to happen. Whoa, and, wait, wait. You didn't get up on no, a gurney I don't and dance. dance. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'll get up on a gurney and sleep. I will not get up on a gurney and dance. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, hospital games yeah, have changed since I was a paramedic. I know that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a Catholic hospital and we, like, so we have a sister and she's very traditional. So I've heard that this party doesn't really get out of hand because everyone's on their best behavior in front of the sister. Oh, and, well, yeah, the last thing we want yeah. is sister Mary chainsaw breaking out at Christmas. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. And she will, <laughs> she will come up and tell you that you're being inappropriate. Not oh. that I know from experience, but. <laughs> oh, really? Um, now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I have to ask because you posted this on open timeline. So this is fair game. Um, yeah. This would not be the person that chastised you for your skull scarf, would it? <laughs> no, she so she did not see it because it was I was there. I was at work on a Saturday. Okay. Like, but, <laughs> see, I'm in the garage and my babies find me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Babies. Know. Um, know. Yeah, she would have though. She would. If I uh, if I I wore it the other day because when I know I don't have any meetings and I'm just gonna be up in like my little corner office all day, I'm good. No one will see me. But uh, yeah, I wore it the other day. I got brave. You got brave. So. I can yeah. I can see you, you know one day you're just going to get tired of it and you're going to kick the door of the hospital in and you're going to be like Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably throw a bitches on the end of that. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh yeah. Well, okay. And then Christmas morning is crazy. You know, there's I have three kids. My sister has two, so there's five young kids so um we used to like when I was growing up we all went like everyone came to my parents house to do Christmas all my aunts and uncles and cousins and they made these drinks called gin fizzes gin fizz yeah uh look it up if you I I have no idea what's in it they don't make them anymore now that we're old enough to drink they don't make them and I'm like no mom like I have three small children I need to be drunk on Christmas (laughs) <laughs> you know, the father-in-law is coming this year. I need to be extra drunk so that I don't say something I'll regret. <laughs> well, uh, look, was it was it just a gin fizz or was it a slow gin fizz? I don't I don't know the difference. Like they would only let us they would only give us sips because I know there's ice cream in it. You know, and so we always thought we were so cool because we got a sip of gin fizz. But now they don't <laughs> even make them. And then like. I brought it up to my mom last year. She's like, oh, they're so fattening. I'm like, well, you didn't care 15 years ago. You know, <laughs> she said, well, 15 years ago, I wasn't so fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, we, that's another tradition we need to restart. Yeah. Why not? Well, you're the grown up now. You can make that happen. I know. That's so scary that I'm the grown up. <laughs> you know, just bring your own supplies and, and throw down. Yeah, okay, this is happening, you guys. I don't care if you think Exactly. You don't have to drink Calories it. Don't I'm going to have. Fitness. Yeah, yes. I'm doing it. I'm doing it this year. You inspired me. There you go. Christmas gin fizz. Whether you're in or out, yes. I'm doing it. <laughs> yes, I like it. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is nothing more than basically this is it's just a different kind of mimosa for Christmas. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, exactly. All right. Well, great. I like it. I, I like that you're inspired. I, I want you to, to go full gusto with this. I uh, can't wait. Yeah, to see I will. The... Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take a selfie with my Gen Fizz. Like I want... a millennial. When you finally had enough, when you're on your, like, your, well, let's see. I, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to say you got some pretty decent stamina. I'm going to give you four, four Gen Fizzes. Okay. And then you're going to duct tape the kids to the wall. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Do you, okay, so you remember Christmas with little kids. It's all, Mom, will you open this? Will you open this? Mom, can we open this one? I'm like, oh, my gosh, your dad's sitting right here. He's just, like, <laughs> over there playing with his new uh, droid or dr- drone, whatever I got him last year, drone. And I'm like, can you, let's help. We have 26 toys here to open. <laughs> And they all, they want every single one of them open right now. Batteries inserted on. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. so hey, look at this. Look at this. We already got uh, feedback here. Somebody's asking for the Christmas Uh-oh. gin fizz recipe. <laughs> I don't, I don't. That's what I said. I don't know it. It's got ice cream and I think like that frozen limeade stuff definitely has alcohol. I'm not sure. I'm guessing gin. <laughs> All right, we're going to get on this. Right? Uh, you're going to have to get with mom and let us know. Okay, I'll look it. I'll look it up. She probably has like a secret family recipe where there's just one thing different from like what you could Google. <laughs> you probably. So I'll ask bad grandma. I'm I'm going through all of Grammy's gifts before we give them to the kids to make sure they're age appropriate. Just kidding. All right. Unlike her book. Age appropriate. <laughs> yeah, unlike the book, the book was good. I love that. That was so funny. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. Well, Tiff, I want to thank you for joining us so much. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. It's about time to sign off and uh, we're going to, we're going to look for your angel tree update and we'll get that posted out for everybody. Uh, and right. thank you for sharing your tradition with us and, and coming on yeah. the air. Uh, we know, 
Oh, I know it was not the easiest thing in the world for you to choose to do. So I appreciate it greatly. And it no has been problem. a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It has been a pleasure chatting with you and the little ones. Um, Likewise, you have the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's going to do it for tonight. Uh, if you like the show, tell your friends. If your friends like the show, you need new ones bad. I mean, real bad. <laughs> but they and you are welcome here with me every week on the conservative curmudgeon show. Thank you, everybody, and God bless. And and Rick is asleep on the job, apparently. (laughs) Uh (laughs) The end music cues and we fade away and Well I'm I'm working on it, but the computer's not cooperating with me here. (laughs) 